This is Pat Solver with Dr. Ways In, and we're doing a Google Hangout on air with Dr. Andrew Lin. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you, Pat. And Andrew and I last chatted about his company. We just decided it was probably about a year ago, last April, when he was here with his co-founder here in California, all the way from Melbourne. Do I have that right? Yep, yeah, you had that right. Okay, good. Since then, since we last talked, I've actually been to Melbourne, so I have a nice picture of that beautiful city in my mind. And we talked it. about their company at the time, which was Stethicloud. And um, they had just won some prizes and were planning on coming to the States, to <laughs> Silicon Valley, of course, uh, to build out their company. So, Andrew, help me fill in the gaps. Since we last chatted, what have you uh, done with the company? What have you accomplished? Where are you at? Um, give us an update. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the last time we chatted, I, uh, I was in your, ha in your home doing an interview with my... Um, with uh, kind of a prototype device of uh, a digital stethoscope that plugs into a phone and an app that does some recording. And uh, uh, since then, we really fleshed out that idea of, uh, of home healthcare, of DIY healthcare. And we really kind of thought about kind of what, what, what was it, the product that we wanted to build. And along the way, we got some funding and built out a team. And, and uh, so the, the first thing that we, we thought was, um, was uh, really important is what we thought about kind of what we wanted to create as a company more than just the product itself. Um, so we wanted to enable uh, consumers to be able to manage their healthcare at home. Something we, we all, like you and I and many kind of innovators out there, believe is really important both for the consumer and kind of for this kind of, um, what was it, quantified self or self-care movement, but also for the health system as a whole um, to, to redistribute care from uh, more clinical setting and more, more hospital-based setting to distribute, redistribute some of the more basic services um, into the home to reduce cost and kind of uh, maximize efficiency. We medicalize some of the things that we <laughs> that we medicalized over the years that uh, in, That's in right. were really done by people themselves. Yeah, I mean that, that's right. That's right, and uh, and, I, and I think a part, well, the the thing we thought was really important is you know we see um, we see a lot of services now which which actually are providing that. Now specifically, I'm talking about telemedicine services where you talk to a doctor uh, in a in a setting much like our, we are now. It's kind of a video a video chat service where you can you can you can you can get you know, medical information. You can you can get um, advice. You can get. You might even be able to get a prescription. And in fact, mo many of them offer prescription these days. But what the home environment lacks um, a lot of the time is the array of sensors and the array of kind of diagnostic tools that a doctor would have in his office, which kind of facilitates a lot of the diagnostic processes. I mean, how do I know this is not something more serious? Um, I mean, if, if it's just a rash, then that's easy. But if it's a, something like a cough, it's really, really hard to know if this is something that's... Uh, so we, we thought about uh, these things. And um, um, as a company, and uh, we, we thought about kind of what we wanted to build. So first of all, beyond the stethoscope. Um, and second of all, kind of the services and software layer around that. How, how do we want to enable a, a, a full stack, a, a kind of end-to-end -end experience for... A, for a, um, a user at home, so um, you know we're still we're still kind of pre-launch, so to speak. But we've built out a, an array of uh, a tools uh, with services that I think uh, uh, is quite compelling at a uh, at a kind of a first first stage release. Good. So it's, tell uh, us about some of these tools. What have you built out so far? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, it's hard to do a demonstration over the internet, but I'll show you the actual devices themselves. Okay. So this is the so this is the new um, the new kit we've uh, uh, we've created. So let me just bring it up. It's uh, hang on, it's, it's a bit 
This is a this is what a, a medical kit we believe that every home should have. But uh, it's got a uh, a digital stethoscope. It's got a non-contact thermometer which connects via Bluetooth, um, and it's in a in a compact carry case which is uh, quite um, which which is designed to look good, but also to kind of comfortably carry these tools around. The idea is that then it comes. To, it comes with an app, which is uh, um, iOS and Android, and, uh, and that enables the uh, user to use these tools. It guides them through a UI, tells them how to use it, uh, use it very simply. Um, especially the stethoscope, where you know traditionally you wouldn't know where to place it, but the UI guides the user and where to place it, etc. Allows them to keep a history of these records, and it also allows them to then send it, uh, share it with their doctor. Or, um, or if they don't have a, a kind of a personal link to their doctor, then send it to a doctor and demand service, which uh, allows them to get uh, instant consultation um, at home. Okay, so I want to stop there and just ask you a few questions. I mean, most parents are used to taking a temperature, even though they don't necessarily use a non-contact thermometer, and they know how to interpret. By and large, my kid has a fever. My kid doesn't have a fever. They they know what to do with that, but yeah. um, but individuals at home aren't used to using a stethoscope. Um, is it your hope? I believe when we talked about a year ago, and uh, there was yeah. some thought about being able to actually have the device help to guide somebody to the diagnosis. Are you still thinking about that? Which I guess would require in this country FDA approval, or yep. are you thinking it more of well, I can collect the the sounds of the breaths, but we'll still leave it to a clinician to make the diagnosis. How are you thinking about that? Well, I think the uh, you know you got to um, we've thought a lot about this. Kind of what is the uh, the proper sequencing of this? Because I I think you know um, inevitably we we all still believe that you know, the there are many, many processes, diagnostic processes. It can be automated machine through algorithm, and the stethoscope is definitely one I, I think is uh, uh, possible and within reach. But kind of, I, I think ultimately there still needs to be a physician layer that sits in between. So um, the way I see uh, the way I see an ideal device or or system working is where you put. You place a stethoscope and gather the data. The the the, the algorithm, the the system tells you a, a triaging answer. Like this is something to worry about. This is not something to worry about. Um, and then and then uh, they're given the option of then connecting to a doctor. You know, do you, uh, if you're worried, please also connect to a doctor. So it's almost like a layer that sits between the the doctor and the patient. Now we haven't developed those algorithms yet, but um, I, I think it's the the overall system that helps a user will have both um, uh, automated elements and a physician um, connection. So if I listen, if I put the stethoscope where the device tells me to put it and I listen and I don't hear anything weird, um, mm -hmm. do you think you'll get to the point where, where the device could say your breath sounds are, are normal? Which is different yeah. than saying I hear wheezes or I hear gurgles or you know, other pathological sounds. So you could you could get to normal without calling a doctor, but perhaps the interpretation of some abnormal breath sounds may need a doc. But you know, in the case of, for example, a kid who has had asthma for years, um, mm -hmm. the parents are chances are they they've heard the wheezes. They haven't. Necessarily heard the wheezes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Heard the wheezes. Um, do you think you could get to the point? And and I realize this isn't your decision. It's really going to be the the FDA because you're uh -huh. you're treading into you know this diagnostic realm. But it seems to me that parents ought to be able to get to the point where they could say, okay, you know, those are wheezes. I know that I ought to do you know for perhaps a, um, you know, a forced uh, vital capacity or you know, some kind of breathing um, test to see uh, how bad it is and then, and then initiate or change therapy which chances are as a parent of an asthmatic 
not me, but a hypothetical parent of an asthmatic, um, should be able to learn how to do. Because after all, diabetics are learning how to manage their diabetes. Absolutely. Um, I mean, um, I mean, great that you mentioned asthma because it's a good, good kind of uh, use case. Um, I mean, the worry with uh, asthmatics, um, and I'm sure you know as a physician as well, is that you know, is it, you know, wheezing is not having an asthma attack isn't the end of the world. You, you know what most most kids, most parents know what to do. It's uh, get get some salbutamol puffers uh, or uh, whatever it is to re re relieve the uh, the attack. Then the worry is: is it getting worse? Is the wheezing getting worse? Is the uh, is the the severity of the the attack getting worse? I mean, you know, it's if in in the absence of doctors, uh, a parent is always going to make that that decision about what to do um, on their own anyway. And giving them tools is only going to make that decision safer, not making it more dangerous. But I think what's more, um, uh, like from from an algorithm's point perspective, uh, what I'd like to see on that front is. Um, you know the severity of the wheezing is one of the the key markers that we we, we can't really quantify at the moment, but um, one of the key markers which we can do something about to quantify the the uh, the severity of disease. And most parents would have an act, asthma action plan where they can. It, it generally says something along uh, along the lines of um, give uh, a couple of puffs of uh, Ventolin, um, and if it's getting if the asthma is getting worse, then bring them into the hospital. Uh, after like assessing ten minutes later or something, something along those lines. But if they're not, then then keep on uh, repeating this cycle, and, and eventually little Tommy's going to get better. So, I mean, the the the, the problem with that plan is that um, you know, particularly more inexperienced carers um, wouldn't know when uh, an asthma attack is getting worse, and that that's kind of where the device comes in um, useful in that. It can a help uh, help make that that decision simpler, um, and and b you can um, you you can then consult a doctor um, or consult an algorithm once that's available um, um, to to help you make that decision. Yeah, I mean, I I think well, we're just in the early days of of, of this DIY. But it seems to me that ultimately, and I want to hear what your plans are, but ultimately I could see you developing what would become a home asthma toolkit, having not only the thermometer and the stethoscope, but perhaps also a pulse ox. Certainly you want to look at the respirations, and then you'd like to give them guidance. Yeah. I was an emergency physician, and, and, and what I learned in all my years of taking care of patients was to quickly assess, ooh, sick? Mm -hmm. Really sick? or not sick, right? And I think that parents can learn how to do that as well, not to replace the doc, but to um, allow them to start initiating treatment, perhaps to abort an attack, avoid a, a hospitalization mm -hmm. or an ER visit if it's safe, right? Yes. Um, yes. And if it's not, to start the treatment before they put the kid in the car and they call the ambulance. So um, do you see something like that having um, Kits, clinic cloud kits that are asthma kits or heart failure kits or you know something else that would have all the home tools that one might need in order to do this initial therapy at home. Well, well, I, oh, it's a it's a hard it's a hard question to answer, but yes, absolutely, I think that's that's something that's uh, that would provide a lot of value for uh, patients, um, and uh, I think it's it, there's no question that. Uh, the, the stethoscope and the thermometer, while being the most universally apl applicable tools around, are not the only tools that will provide value for the consumer. And these, these kind of, to, to kind of create a virtual clinic at home where, you know, there's actually, uh, you can cover, you know, 80, 90 percent of all the concerns that uh, a patient has to deal with. You need to create additional sensors which kind of support that, uh, the, the diagnostic decision and also make just make sure that the person is comprehensibly covered. So, sure. so now let's talk a little bit about, well, I'm sorry. I, I want to talk a little bit about your about your business. Um, yeah. So, so you've got this kit. You actually showed me the kit. That was cool. Uh, when's it? Gonna, yeah, yeah. When's it going to be on the market? Um. So, uh, we're hoping to be generally available uh, in September. So, 
Uh, we're shipping out a first uh, first batch in July. Um, so by generally available, I'm, I'm, uh, we've had plans which are kind of under under non-disclosures uh, to be on retail shelves. But also we're working with a, a number of clinics um, to kind of see how we can deploy in a in a single clinic setting as well. Um, so there's definitely two approaches here. Okay, so one would be I could go to, I don't know, Walgreens, which is getting into healthcare in a big way, and buy the kit myself, or the other is I could get it through wherever I get my healthcare. Yeah, I mean, the, the other way is your, your physician would, 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 tell, would say to you, well, I think you need one of these, where we're going to have, have this in our clinic, where uh, I think it will provide you with a lot of value. But you're, so not those require, are... you're not looking to have a prescription in order to get one of these. No, 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 no. I think it's uh, uh it's uh, it's uh, after all. I mean, the, the the way we see it is it's 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 definitely a neat cross section between consumer electronics, um, which are more lifestyle products, and the more and uh, medical devices, which um, in themselves, even glucometers, don't really require prescriptions to get. Okay, so uh, FDA or not FDA? Are you guys having to go through the FDA, or do you fall well, into area of the guidance that they gave that says you don't have to get FDA approval. Yeah, you know, last year when we chatted, we, I was uh, I was pretty concerned about the FDA. We, we, we've been working with a consultant and uh, um, and had been starting to prepare the paperwork to file, etc. But uh, you know, last year in August they made a neat announcement which exempted a number of devices, which happily covered the stethoscope and the thermometer. Okay, good. Uh, so but, you feel comfortable that your your devices won't need to have FDA approval before you go to market. Right, right. But the, it, it still doesn't change a lot of the process we still have to do. The the, the CFR 820 uh, quality systems, the uh, uh, the M4 kind of European market, the ISO certification is very very similar, as well as kind of the calibration standards that the uh, the thermometer has to get to. I mean, all those remain the same. You just don't have to apply. Put in the paperwork and wait for a few months. To, okay, and you don't. What about clinical trials? Do, have you done any, or are you planning to do any to show that these devices are, let's say, as effective as the gold standard, which would be perhaps the digital thermometer in your doctor's office or your physician listening to your lungs? Um, well, the I, I don't. I think we we are definitely planning to do. Uh, Clinical studies. We've got a couple underway at the moment. Uh, they're mainly uh, looking at the uh, algorithm side of things. Um, as for the actual calibration standard, the thermometer, for example, has uh, ASTM standards which are fairly well publicized. Uh, not, not so it doesn't. I guess while we will do uh, some clinical deployments which test it out, it, uh, the standards are. Pretty pretty well set that you can just abide by them. See how you compare to uh, to uh, uh, to rivals and more of an engineering test and clinical test. Okay, great. So just a couple last questions and we'll wrap up here. You kind of breathe by. Well, I got some funding and I built out a team. Put some meat on the bones. Uh, how much funding did you get? Who did you get it from? And how many people are working for the company now? <sighs> Great question. <laughs> I, I skipped over it, and I thought you would uh, you, you would forget about it. But um, no, so we, we it caught my eye because you went. This, it was so smooth. <laughs> well, we we had a million dollars in funding last year, um, and uh, uh, we've just closed some more. Um, so uh, to be announced soon. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, and I and I hope it'll take us to a to a stage where. Um, we can uh, we can see we can see the devices working in the field. We have we have some the, the beginnings of the uh, of uh, I guess some more uh, kind of a or automated assist, uh, diagnostic assistance to available and uh, uh, in, um, uh, I guess. We can see, we can steadily see the adoption of these products through the various channels we're target, targeting. So that, okay. that's a, and and, and in, ter in terms of the team, um, we currently have twelve people, which is scary. Uh, which uh, since From last two to time, we, well, last time we had yeah, two two plus one other. Um, so it's uh, 
it's definitely been growing. Um, uh, I mean, one one of the first things that constantly surprises me is uh, is uh, how how many people would actually how much uh, different expertise you actually need to pull off um, uh, pull off a project this size. So I think we've been pretty lucky in, in find, being able to find the right people. And part of the reason why we uh, we still base most of the team in Melbourne is uh, because it's it's much easier actually to find engineering good engineering talent here um, without having to compete in the Bay Area. Uh, I mean, said that, uh, you know, I know last time we talked about kind of when we're moving over the, the entire team, uh, we, we are going to, uh, to move over our, um, our, our marketing and sales functions over to the U.S. fairly soon, so in the next uh, four or five months. Okay, so we're going to close with this. I, I guess from all of that, I take it that I'm talking to you in Melbourne. We didn't clarify that at the beginning. Is that the case? Uh, yeah, uh, we're, yes, we're talking in Melbourne. Okay, so <laughs> I, I just want to close by saying Melbourne was one of the most beautiful, um, uh, friendly cities that I have ever been in, and I've been all over the world. Uh, I just loved it. We were there in, in January when uh, the city just announced they were going to make the trolleys free for everyone in the inner city, and I said, holy cow, that is really wonderful. So if you uh, decide to stay in Melbourne, I can, I can understand why. It's really a beautiful, livable city. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and so I want to thank you, Andrew, for this update. And I hope that when you're able to make the announcement of the jillions of dollars that you just raised, that you'll let us know. And once the product's on the market, uh, you know, reach out to us. We'll have you come back and give us an update. Great. Love to, uh, lo love to send you a, uh, a set of uh, devices when they're ready. Okay, well, we'd love to get them and try them out. So thank you very much, and um, have a good, let's see, evening? Is it evening there? No, it's, it's, it's morning now. I just woke up. Oh, have a good, have a good day in Melbourne. Great. Th thanks, Pat. Sure, bye. Great to chat.